This video is brought to you by Technically Not a Technician. Updating your Pi is easy and offers you a ton of benefits. Today we will be updating the firmware on a Pi 4, so that it'll boot from both the SD card or USB port. For today's project we'll need the following items. An SD card. A Raspberry Pi 4. A power supply. An HDMI micro to full-size cable. Heat sinks for the CPU and GPU, and a keyboard and mouse. We'll also need to install some software first. SD formatter and Raspberry Pi imager. Both links can be found in the description. Please download and install both applications. The first thing we need to do is download both programs. Let's start with SD Formatter. You can grab the link from my description below, or you can always simply Google SD Formatter to find the link. Once you find the download page, scroll down until you see the link for your operating system or OS. I'm on an old Windows 7 laptop. So I will download the Windows version. Again scroll down to the bottom and blindly click the accept to start your download. As SD4 Matter downloads let's get Raspberry Pi Imager. You can grab the link from my description or simply Google Raspberry Pi Imager. Once you find the download page click on the link that corresponds to your operating system. Again, I'm on a Windows machine so I will be downloading the Windows version. Now that we have both programs downloaded, let's go to our downloads folder and have a look. You should find one zipped folder and one .exe file. This zip file is the SD formatter program and the .exe file is the Raspberry Pi imager software. We'll start by unzipping the SD Formatter program. I use a program called 7-Zip. You should be able to use a similar built-in Windows program. So if what you have isn't the same as me, it's no big deal. After you've unzipped the SD Formatter program folder, open the folder and find the executable or .exe file and double-click on it. This will begin the installation of SD Formatter. You will need to click next here and then blindly click on the I accept and click next once again. This next step asks if you wish to change the directory. If you don't need to change it or have no idea what that even means, then simply click next and move on. Now finally we will click on the install button. The installation shouldn't take long. For right now we will just click on finish. Next we will go back to our download folder, and we will find the Raspberry Pi Imager software called Imager 1.7.1, and we will start the installation of those files by double clicking on the executable. The executable will start, and we will need to click on install. Once the program installs all we need to do is click finish. We're going to use SD Formatter to verify that we're working with a clean SD card. SD Formatter is a simple but powerful formatting tool. We'll also use Raspberry Pi Imager to load the Pi firmware to our SD card. Raspberry Pi Imager is also a powerful program. It's an official Raspberry software app that can be used to load Raspberry Pi images to your SD card. Very easy to use and has a ton of helpful tools. Now that we have all of our software installed let's connect our SD card to our computer. Most people will need an adapter of some kind, and most adapters come in two kinds. A USB adapter or a full-size SD card adapter. I'll be using a USB adapter.
I'll simply put my SD card into my USB adapter and connect it to my computer. Once your SD card is connected to your computer open SD formatter, verify that you have the right drive letter, and click format. Once done simply close the program. Now let's open Raspberry Pi Imager and select the Choose OS option. You're going to have a few options, but for today's project we will scroll to the bottom and select Miscellaneous Utility Images. Here you can select from Bootloader, Beta Test Bootloader, or something called PIN. We want the Beta Test Bootloader. After we select the Beta Test option we will be given three more options. The first is Boot from SD Card the USB Drive. The second is to boot from USB drive then from the SD card, and the last is a network boot if no SD card is there. Most of the time I boot from an SD card, so that is the option we will be picking today. After you have made your selection you will be asked to choose your storage. You should find your SD card listed, please verify that you're on the right drive. Once your drive is confirmed click the right button, you will get a prompt letting you know that all data on the card will be lost. Just hit yes. The program will write the files and verify that the image was saved to the card correctly. Next, we need to put our SD card into our Raspberry Pi and connect it to power and let the firmware on the SD card transfer to our Raspberry Pi. Now we will simply place our card into our Raspberry Pi. Next, we will connect the HDMI cable. I don't think you need the cable. However, when the firmware is done flashing to the Pi, it shows a green screen that I'll share with you in a minute. Finally, we will connect the power which will start the process. You'll know the system is done flashing when the green LED light starts to flash quickly. You will also get a green screen on your monitor that looks a lot like the following. Once you're done it's safe to test your system and verify that we can now boot from both the SD card or a USB drive. First, we will connect everything and then boot off of our SD card and verify that the booting option for SD card will work. Basically, on your screen you should see the standard 4x3 ratio color pattern, and then the unit will resize itself, and then reboot. After the last reboot, you will be into the Raspberry Pi OS. Running the Pi from an SD card for a desktop can be taxing on the system resources. As you can see the system is a bit sluggish. Now let's give a USB drive a go. Shall we? Now that we have our Raspberry Pi powered down, let's unplug it and remove the SD card. Now, let's plug in the USB drive, then let's plug the power back in and boot from the USB drive.
The Raspberry Pi now sees that it doesn't have an SD card in it, and it looks for a drive on the USB ports to boot from. The system seems to run much better off of a USB drive with an SSD attached, versus the SD card. We now have a Raspberry Pi that can boot from both the SD card and from a USB drive. We hope you enjoyed our video, and thank you so much for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe.